It's where you go to bike, hike, and stroll miles of pathways over more than 7,000 acres of parkland. A place to go explore rivers and fish their bountiful waters. Natural places to go marvel at magnificent wildlife while you play outdoors and go wander charming communities. Find all this and more at Destination Downriver. Give it a go. Today's podcast is presented by MarketInsights.us with the podcast on YouTube produced by the City of Taylor's Media Center. Thank you for the generous support of our community sponsor. When your destination is beyond downriver, let Martinson Family of Funeral Homes help you and your family. With locations in Trenton, Allen Park, Maybe, Rockwood, and Monroe, their staff is available 24-7 at 734-671-5400. For more information, visit martinson.com. Thank you to our team sponsor, Allegra marketing, print, and design. Let Allegra assist you with your print, mail, design, and signs. Locate in Wyandotte, Michigan, or call 734-284-5330. Welcome to Destination Downriver. I'm your host, Carl Zlamack. Towering over the Detroit River just north of River Rouge, the Gordy Howell International Bridge Project will be the longest cable-stayed bridge in North America. Spanning just over a half mile, the new bridge will help facilitate the largest bilateral trade relationship on Earth between the United States and Canada. The bridge's towers on either side of the Detroit River dominate the skyline and act as something of a signature for the two countries linked by this architectural masterpiece. And it's right there in Down River's backyard. If you haven't witnessed this historic construction project, you're really missing out on a piece of history in the making. Joining us for this special episode on the Gordie Howell Bridge are two members of the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. Heather Grondon and Grant Hilbers will join Heather and Grant next on this episode of Destination Downriver. Okay, we're back with our panel guests. Joining us for this special on the Gordie Howe Bridge Project are Heather Grondon, Chief Relations Officer, and Grant uh, Hilbers, Chief Capital Officer for the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. Let's start with you, Heather. Tell us about your job. Uh, what is it? It sounds like you do a lot of different things all rolled into one. I do. I love my job. Mm -hmm. um, my job's all about relationships, and there's a lot of relationships behind the Gordie Howe International Bridge. So whether that's with media, mm -hmm. uh, the community, uh, various stakeholders, government relations, that's really all of the work that we encompass. So our website, our social media channels, our public meetings, our community benefits plan, mm -hmm. that's all within the realm of the work that I, my, my team are responsible for. How big's your team? Uh, we have about 20, 22. Okay, yeah. already. You have a very inclusive website. Yes. It goes in a lot of different directions. Yeah. A lot of great information on there. That's great. Uh, what's Thank the you. URL? Uh, GordieHowInternationalBridge.com. Okay, all right. An easy one to remember. It's an easy okay. one to remember. Grant, what about you? Tell us about your job. So I am responsible for overseeing the delivery of the capital project. Mm -hmm. So the Gordie Howard International Bridge is actually four projects in one, mm -hmm. uh, two ports of entry, one obviously in each country, mm -hmm. uh, the bridge and some work to connect the uh, U.S. port of entry to I-75. Okay. What's the, what's the most difficult portion of those four portions? They all have, uh, they all have different, different challenges. Okay. I think the most mm -hmm. sophisticated from an engineering perspective would be the bridge. Uh, this will be the longest cable stay bridge in North America mm -hmm. by quite some distance. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really an engineering marvel. Heather, what did you do immediately before joining the authority? Um, believe it or not, I've been working on a new border transportation system between Windsor and Detroit for almost 18 years. Wow. Okay. So I started mm -hmm. um, on this project in the environmental study phase back mm -hmm. in 2005. Mm -hmm. I really don't remember a life before that, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Um, but I have the unique privilege of having worked on this project from the very, very early days, worked very closely with the Michigan Department of Transportation on the mm -hmm. binational environmental study. Mm -hmm. And then I worked on the Highway 401 extension, which mm -hmm. leads Highway 401 in Ontario directly to the Canadian Port of Entry. And then I moved over to the Bridge Authority to work specifically on these four components. Grant, what about you? 
Uh, so previous to, to working for WDBA, uh, I worked for DT Energy for 13 mm -hmm. years, and mm -hmm. prior to that I worked for a number of consultants on either side of the border. Okay. Uh, but I've been with the organization for seven years now, so I was here prior to procurement uh, doing uh, land development, utility relocations, mm -hmm. so I've been with this project quite some time. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'll, I'll just fire off some, some questions that you guys can just pick up wherever you, whoever wants to pick up the answer. Nearly uh, 150 billion worth of products and materials are transported annually between the U.S. and Canada uh, at the Detroit River, which represents approximately 25 percent of all land trade between the two countries. Hopefully we got that right. Yep. Uh, what sort of impact might the new bridge have specifically on downriver residents? Right. So you know, going back, and as I noted, I've been on this project for a long time, mm -hmm. but the start of the project actually goes back to 2000. Mm -hmm. And that's when the governments of Canada, the U.S., Ontario, and Michigan got together and recognized that volume of trade and mm -hmm. how critical the Detroit-Windsor Trade Corridor is. Mm -hmm. And the question that they asked themselves was, is this corridor as it exists as efficient as it can possibly be? Mm -hmm. Are we ensuring that trade can move and can flow as freely as possible? Mm -hmm. And that led eventually to this new transportation system being constructed and implemented. With that, what we're creating, and this will benefit uh, the movement of trade wherever it comes from that does cross through this border, mm -hmm. is you know, improved border processing capabilities. The largest ports of entry along the Canada-US border are being constructed. Mm -hmm. As Grant noted, the largest uh, cable stay bridge, which will be able to accommodate not just today's traffic volumes, but traffic volumes for the future. Um, having system connectivity, and by that I mean being able to connect directly from Highway 401 in Ontario to the interstate system. All of that together is going to allow for traffic, trade, people to move through this important corridor freely um, without that stop and go traffic that we currently have and really allow for that trade to increase. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're going to see people be able to bring, bring their goods to market that much faster. And that includes anyone here in Downriver. How does the whole project fit with the Ambassador Bridge? Yeah, so, um, you know, back during the environmental study, um, the consideration was all about making this corridor, as I noted, as efficient and as strong as possible. And with that, it, that includes the existing Ambassador Bridge remaining in place. We mm -hmm. need these various crossings at this corridor. Mm -hmm. As you noted, 25% of Canada-US trade flows mm -hmm. through this area. So we need the Ambassador Bridge open, we need the Gordie Howe International Bridge open, we need the tunnel open, mm -hmm. so that we're ensuring that all of the capacity can, uh, can be accommodated for. Grant, when we talk about offshoots of, of all of this construction, the Detroit street improvements are a big part of that. Can you, can you speak? to that? Um, so as part of this project, we're delivering something called complete streets to mm -hmm. a number of roads uh, surrounding the, the port of entry, really mm -hmm. to, to benefit the community that's hosting mm -hmm. uh, the port of entry. Um, so those streets will include uh, enhancements, re reconstruction uh, enhancements, including bike lanes and bike paths. Mm -hmm. uh, the project is going to tie into um, the existing bike path system. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, the, uh, we also have a, a uh, multi-use trail on the bridge that those bike paths will tie into making the, the connecting bike paths in Canada or in Canada and the U.S. together, uh, and that will be uh, a toll-free uh, bike mm -hmm. path. We had a, uh, a leading environmentalist in this area, John Hardig, who I'm sure you've dealt with. He was on our show a few months ago, and, and he was looking so forward mm -hmm. to how this bridge and that uh, idea of bikes and, and, and walkers and things like that play into it. Uh, it sounds like it's going to really make things fit along that border front. Well, it's really part of, uh, part of the uh, uh, community benefits that, that this mm -hmm. project delivers. Mm -hmm. um, that's been considered from day one in this project mm -hmm. through the studies all the mm -hmm. way through delivery. Mm -hmm. What about Sandwich Street improvements now? That's on the Canadian side, correct? R correct. Mm -hmm. on, on we're reconstructing Sandwich Street, about three kilometers of Sandwich Street. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Really, again, because that's a host community, um, mm -hmm. that Sandwich Street ties into uh, the Canadian port of entry, mm -hmm. um, and that work is underway right now. Uh, and design and technology advancements, when we're talking about that and we're talking about your project, what type of design and, and technology 
advancements are people going to see? Uh, so as Heather indicated, one of, one of the goals of this project is connectivity. Um, mm. So um, interestingly, the, the signage on the bridge is dynamic signage. So mm. uh, while we have six lanes, those lanes can be uh, redirected so that they can be incoming lanes to either country can, can be accommodate whatever traffic flows that we have. Mm. Um, the um, customs facilities will all have the latest technology mm -hmm. um, and the tolling facilities are also going to incorporate the latest technology. So mm -hmm. uh, throughout the design and construction uh, we've, we've incorporated uh, those technologies but we've also accommodated for future technology. So the plan is to continue to um, upgrade that, evolve mm -hmm. as things change. It's got to be a pleasure to be able to take all of these uh, modern day advancements and technologies and, and program them into a project like this. Because usually when you're looking at a crossing or a bridge or something, it's been there forever. Uh, and now you don't have to refit everything, you're, you're starting from scratch. Right, that's mm -hmm. the benefit of this project mm -hmm. is the, uh, uh, you know, given the size of the two ports of entry, uh, it was a, uh, uh, a blank palette, so we could accommodate all of the requirements of the agencies that will be occupying those buildings mm -hmm. and really design not only for now but for the future. Now this project is kind of a poster child for public-private uh, uh, partnerships. Can you give us an insider's look at that, Heather? Uh, sure, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. So this project is being delivered as a public-private partnership or a mm -hmm. P3. Uh, we went through a very extensive procurement process mm -hmm. to bring on our private sector partner, Bridging North America. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it is very much like P3s, other P3s that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, WDBA, we are the bridge operator, and in our contract with Bridging North America, we've delegated some of those responsibilities to mm -hmm. them. So our contract has a design build phase, which mm -hmm. we're currently in, mm -hmm. and then we also have a 30-year operations phase. And our contract value is 5.7 billion. I always like to remind people that's Canadian <laughs> dollars. Um, but that doesn't mean that the bridge, we're often asked, does that mean like what happens after 30 years? Mm -hmm. This bridge is not being constructed for a 30 year lifespan, mm -hmm. it's being constructed for a 125 year lifespan. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, your website mentions uh, 2,500 jobs created by this project. Does that mainly focus on construction jobs or what else are we talking about here? Yeah, so that's, mm -hmm. that's really um, the estimate of the peak, of okay. our peak mm -hmm. of construction, which we're at right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, over the summer of this year, of summer of 2023, we really were anywhere between 2,200 to 2,500 people could have been seen across the four sites. Mm -hmm. um, in actuality, over the five years of construction, so construction started back in October of 2018, mm -hmm. um, over 10,000 people have been trained to work on the project. That's mm -hmm. how we count uh, the number of people who have contributed. So well exceeded that 2,500, that really is at, at the peak. But we're very happy with the fact that over 10,000 people have gone through our training program. And another important milestone we recently hit, over 10 million hours of work have been logged on the construction site. Wow, that's, that's, that is a lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot of manpower. Yep. Uh, historic significance up and down the Detroit mm -hmm. Riverfront. Uh, the corridor was once a place where escaped slaves used the Underground Railroad and attempted to cross the Freedom in Canada. I understand that you're commissioning some public art projects to commemorate that and other uh, visuals of historical significance. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So we did, again, we've talked about the fact that we were really able to start from mm -hmm. nothing. We have these, mm -hmm. these open sites that mm -hmm. we're able to build this project on. And that has given us the leeway to mm -hmm. think about how we can integrate aesthetics. Mm -hmm. um, and more than just the functionality of moving trucks and cars across the border. So we have included a visual arts program into our overall project. Mm -hmm. um, that includes a number of public art commissions, mm -hmm. um, one of which is going to be one that recognizes the freedom seekers who cross the Detroit River from the US into Canada. Uh, we'll soon be announcing the artist who will be um, delivering that piece and he will be doing um, some consultation with the community. We're going to be placing that art piece in an area that people will be able to access and see when they're walking across, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as they go across the bridge, mm -hmm. it will be on the Canadian side. Again, so you don't have to go into the port of entry to see it. Mm -hmm. People who may just be visiting the bridge and visiting the path toward the bridge will be able to see that public art commission. Is there, are, or are there educational programs connected with the, with the bridge development uh, 
that might be of interest to, to public or to, to schools in general on both sides of the border? Yeah, there are. Mm -hmm. So we definitely encourage p any you know teachers or school mm -hmm. boards who are interested in learning more about the project to reach out to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a number of modules, or we have a number of modules available that will go out to schools to talk about you know, talking about the engineering aspect of the bridge, mm -hmm. certainly our sustainability component, which is a huge component of this undertaking and that has been integrated into every aspect of the project. Mm -hmm. And we've also gone to schools to talk about skilled labor and some of the benefits of, of, of going into uh, a skilled workforce. So mm -hmm. really the best way if anyone's interested is to reach out to us. Our mm -hmm. email address is info at wdbridge.com and okay. we're happy to have conversations um, okay. about how we might be able to go to schools. Alrighty. Uh, on the same note, and you would probably be able to address this better than anybody else, uh, are there best spots for people to view this construction? There are. Um, okay. yeah, on the Canadian side, uh, mm -hmm. there's an observation deck that's nearing completion on Malden Park. Malden Park is a, mm -hmm. is a hill that's, that's uh, very close to, to the overall site. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, uh, you know, I hear all, all over the place people just driving down various streets on both sides of the border. Uh, mm -hmm. You can now see it now that the tower's up and, and uh, a number of the cables are up. You can see this from, from across the region at this point. Uh, with the pedestrian walkways and paths, uh, are there going to be instructions or any anything that people who want to use those are really going to have to know, uh, drop-off points or parking points or anything like that? Uh, who wants to address that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take mm -hmm. that one. Right. So there will be. We will communicate very much so where people will be able to access. And as mm -hmm. Grant noted, we are making connections into mm -hmm. existing trail networks mm -hmm. so that people can have that full end-to-end -end experience. Mm -hmm. What will be important for people to remember is that they are crossing an international bridge. So just like if you were crossing in your car, mm -hmm. you will need proper identification, pro proper cross-border identification. Um, what's unique and what we've been able to accommodate within our ports of entry are designated areas, mm -hmm. designated uh, customs areas. Mm -hmm. um, so any pedestrian cyclist will not have to travel next to or along with vehicles. Mm -hmm. They'll have their own separate inspection areas. But we will make sure that once the bridge opens and once the pedestrian bridge is, you know, is open for operations, that people very much know what, what will be expected of them to cross the bridge. What percentage are we done with this construction? Um, well, we've got the four different components. Mm -hmm. um, we usually use about 70% uh, okay. as a description. And as Heather noted, mm -hmm. uh, 2023, this year, was the peak uh, of construction. Mm -hmm. uh, next year, uh, there'll also be, be quite a bit of construction uh, mm -hmm. winding up, but about 70%. Um, if you look at the bridge itself, uh, more than 50% of the bridge uh, over water has mm -hmm. been constructed. So mm -hmm. we expect the bridge to be connected uh, sometime in the summer of next year. Uh, mm -hmm. Following that connection, uh, well, everybody's going to expect traffic right away. There's quite a bit of work that uh, has to take Still place in order to, to get yeah. it ready for traffic. Mm -hmm. When the, what's is there a drop dead deadline for the or an estimated deadline for when it opens to the public and you're all done? Yeah, there isn't a drop dead deadline. Okay. Um, it's right. just really our mm -hmm. job is to continue to make the progress that people mm -hmm. are seeing out there. Mm -hmm continuing to construct at the mm -hmm. high quality that mm -hmm. that is expected and most importantly and our number one top priority is making sure that people are out there working safely mm -hmm. and are able to go home at the end of the day mm -hmm. um, but continuing to really to push and make that progress that people have you are guys seeing. had many problems with uh, with injuries or anything like that uh, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing not typical mm -hmm. of, of a construction project. Um, okay. mm -hmm. uh, Bridging North America, our private sector partner, has mm -hmm. a, a comprehensive mm -hmm. program of training, mentoring, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and really has employed best practices related to safety. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything we've missed? Well, actually, I'll just add on the safety mm -hmm. note, um, Bridging North America just received for the third year in a row mm -hmm. a very prestigious um, a safety award called the John M. Beck Award in mm -hmm. Canada mm -hmm. that recognizes um, an organization, a construction project that has a very high level, high quality safety program in place mm -hmm. and that's something that the team has been very, very proud of. Mm -hmm. I assume that this bridge is going to take on the persona of the person it was named after. 
Uh, Gordy, uh, Howe, Gordy Howe lasted forever yeah. and, was one, and was one quality individual. I think uh, it sounds like the bridge is going to take right after him. Definitely. Yep. Well, that's fantastic. So where do you go from here? Uh, what's, 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 uh, what's number one on your, uh, your to-do list this week? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, uh, probably one of my favorite aspects of my job is every single day is different. Okay. There's always something different coming up. Mm -hmm. But I think I have some other meetings, some mm -hmm. other uh, some other stakeholder meetings to do mm -hmm. this week. And then we are prepping. Just last weekend, we had um, a community breakfast mm -hmm. in southwest Detroit, mm -hmm. and we're planning for one to be had in Windsor in a week from now. Mm -hmm. So that's really some of the, the key focus that we're doing this week. What about you, Grant? So my, my focus in life these days is getting us to do day one opening, getting mm -hmm. the infrastructure completed. So mm -hmm. um, every every day I come in and, and, and that is the, really the focus, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with any of these small issues that come up. Mm -hmm. um, and really, I'm looking towards uh, uh, the turnover of this asset. So it mm -hmm. may seem may seem like it's in the distance to to everybody watching this construction from afar, but we are we are planning for completion every mm -hmm. single day at this point. What do you once everything's done, okay, and they're putting all the boxes away and all the workers <laughs> are going home? Where do you guys? What do you do then? So, well, Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority will continue mm -hmm. to exist. Mm -hmm. um, we are the Crown Corporation that the government has identified as being mm -hmm. responsible for the overall delivery of the project. Mm -hmm. So we continue to work away through mm -hmm. WDBA, ensuring that the bridge is operating, that people are well informed, that um, you know we'll be administering the toll that needs mm -hmm. to go through. So that very much becomes part of becomes part of our future jobs mm -hmm. or you know who, who knows what what mm -hmm. the next project might be it might be mm -hmm. difficult to step down into day-to-day mm -hmm. -day operations after having worked through this exciting design build I can phase. imagine now, Grant do you do you stay with the authority after this or they're gonna move you to another huge project um, so, so the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority mm -hmm. uh, was set up by the Canadian government mm -hmm. just for just the construction for and operation of this project. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And like I said, my my focus is on delivering this project. Mm -hmm. And then even after it opens, there will be some closeout activities. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, um, there's no need for a, a construction entity uh, <laughs> <laughs> once everything's uh, mm -hmm. operating smoothly. Well, fantastic. Well, thanks. Many thanks to both of you for coming on today. Uh, you guys did a great job of bringing us up to speed on what is arguably the most important public works project to take place in this area since maybe the Windsor Tunnel and the mm -hmm. Ambassador Bridge itself. Uh, you really owe it, uh, and, and people out there really owe it to themselves to get down there and, and take a look for themselves because you're literally viewing history and making. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks to everybody for this version of Destination Downriver. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Grant. Hopefully we'll be able to maybe have you on again and you can bring us more up to date as you move forward. We'd love to do that. All right, fantastic. We'll see you on the next Destination Downriver. Thank you again to our sponsors, Martinson Family of Funeral Homes and Allegra Marketing, with a special thanks to our production partners here at the new Taylor Media Center. Thanks for listening and watching. Please visit our website, destinationdownriver.com, or our Facebook page, and be sure to join us for next month's podcast. 